Okay, before we begin, I want I want to open. Uh, is there any question, any uh, any things, any issues raised regard re, re, related to anything about uh, the the class about our class? Okay, I guess there's now no issues rising up. I just want to, you know, every week I would like to uh, open up uh, in case there are some questions uh, related to either the content or the technical issues of the class. So it's important that I know if there's something, some issue going on, then you, you should uh, inform me. Uh, if not, okay, I think there's nothing, no issue. So let's continue with this, with today's topic. Uh, today's topic is epistemology and education. Last week, we talked about what is education, what is teaching. Uh, today, we're going to move on to uh, topics related to knowledge. So when we talk about epistemology, it relates with knowledge. In philosophy, uh, there are five branches of philosophy. Some scholars say there are more. Uh, some scholars say there are only four. Uh, but uh, I, I, I choose the one that says five. There are five branches of, of uh, philosophy. And epistemology is one of them. Other branches are like metaphysics. Uh, logic is another branch. Ethic, moral and ethic is one branch. Aesthetic is also another branch. And epistemology is the branch that it, that relates a lot or it's, it's considered as very close to education. So our, our topic today is, is focusing on this branch of philosophy. Uh, I hope you'll excuse me because I'm, I'm having a fever since yesterday. Uh, there's a bunch of tissue here on my table. I'm glad you don't have to see that. Okay, epistemology and education. What is epistemology? First, my first question will be, how many of you have encountered this term before? Raise your hand or you say yes in the chat box. I need some response here. How many of you have encountered or have heard this term before? Epistemology. Just a quick survey. You know the raise hand function, right? I think if you guys raise hand, I can see the the lower end say no. Oh, I mean, no one's raising hand in the in the uh, video means uh, you haven't heard it. Okay, put it. Heard it, uh, Siti Arzira said, heard it before, but not really clear about the meaning. Don't worry, I'm not going to ask you. I'm not going to, if you say yes, I'm not going to ask you, okay, what, where have you heard it? I just want to, I just want to see. Uh, it, every semester is like this. Uh, it's still a strange term for a lot of people. Uh, and it is, uh, not only in here in Malaysia, I believe, uh, even in, the U.S. also is a strange term unless you are uh, studying under philosophy or you are in the school of education. But usually people in the school of education, if, if you say epistemology, most people would know what does it mean. So it's from the Greek word episteme or knowledge. Uh, the name for epistemology is theory of knowledge. It's famous or it's well known as to be translated into theory of knowledge. Uh, but it's not uh, in it's it's not the uh, how should I say it's not the direct translation of it. Uh, people say a theory of knowledge because that's what we are doing. Uh, epistemology from the word episteme and logos. Uh, they combine the two words. It turns to epistemology. It's the same concept when you say biology. Biology biology will be the study of what is bio? Uh, living things, right? If you say geology, it's the study of Earth. Uh, if you say astrology, it's the study of, uh, you know, astronomy. Uh, that's why there's, there's a difference between 
method and methodology. If you are writing your dissertation, your thesis, uh, I think the chapter is methodology. It means you study about different methods and you have justification why you choose a certain method. So you, you go into, it means that you, you did your study on method. And there's a justification on why you choose a certain method. Uh, what else besides epistemology? Uh, zoology, <laughs> the study of, of animals. Uh, so all those uh, is, is uh, it, it comes, the, 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 uh, the word logi is from the term logos in Greek, uh, which means reason. It, it relates to reason. So the, the example that I gave you guys, we say the study of this, the study of that. Uh, usually that's in empirical science, empirical in science knowledge, scientific knowledge. That's why uh, people use this term, the study of earth, the study of plants, the study of animals. But if you say the study of knowledge, <laughs> it sounds weird. Why are you studying knowledge? That's why we use the term, the theory of knowledge. How you study knowledge? You are theorizing. You are making a theory on knowledge. That's why it's a bit different when we talk about geology, biology, uh, zoology, and all these terms. So epistemology is the study, the theory of knowledge, because we are uh, theorizing about knowledge. So these are some of the questions when philosophers are dealing with epistemology questions. These are some of the questions: the process of knowing. How do we know? How do you know something? How do you uh, acquire knowledge? How does knowledge being transferred? That uh, transfer. Knowledge is not something that you can touch. It's not an object. Uh, knowledge is uh, it's not something that's visible. You know, uh, you can say a lot of things. You can show a video. You can give students textbooks, ask them to read, but whether that knowledge being transferred or not, you don't know. That's why we need to have uh, some kind of assessment, whether the, the students master the skills or not, whether the students uh, really uh, understand or not what was being transferred. If the students understand, then it shows knowledge has been transferred. But how is being transferred? It's impossible to be transferred physically. We cannot have like, uh, uh, if you watch X-Men, from time to time, I'm going like, to relate this class with some movies that I watch. Uh, you cannot you cannot have like a helmet like you know in, in X-Men, there's a Professor X wearing the helmet, the cerebral and then or oh, I uh, connect the wire to all the students, the students just wear the helmet and then just download whatever uh, knowledge I have. That is impossible to happen. No matter how hard scientists try to connect between one mind to another person's mind, uh, that has not happened yet. And I don't think that can happen. It, it, it's because the nature of our mind, our consciousness is different. It is not the same as uh, data in a computer hard disk. In a, it's not like a, 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 you know, it's not like hard disk in computer. It's different. Our mind is totally different from, from the computer. Some people, they use this term, the brain as a supercomputer. That's actually misleading because it's not correct. It's not the right uh, analogy. Uh, that's why we have, you know, we are looking at the mind, the human mind, in a, in in a wrong way. When we say it's a supercomputer, it's like computer but more. No, it's different. It's totally different how the mind works. So, what happened? I put the word interpret there. What happened is that when we are trying to deliver something, some knowledge or some information, I say some words, and these words are actually symbols if if you don't know english you're not going you, you cannot understand the words that come out from my mouth you cannot understand if you don't know english uh, the only way of understanding what i'm saying is by understanding each word and each sentence that i say so that's how we understand it's symbol otherwise uh, you know for example if you can see if a voice is something that's, that's like an object, like you can see things that come, come out from my mouth every time I say it, uh, 
it, it comes out as a symbol. If you understand the language, you understand what the symbol means. If you don't understand the language, you see it's a weird symbol. What is it? It's like that, the experience. So what happened is that we create symbols through language. Uh, every sentence, every word that comes out from our mouth. And then that symbol is being interpreted by the students. That is what hap what's happening right now. Uh, I'm talking in English. You heard the word, you interpret what it means. Uh, and by interpretation, it only happens by interpretation. And when you understand it, then it comes out. There. So there's a lot of theory there. Uh, one of them is, the famous one is constructivism. You relate what you heard from me with what you already know. But that still require, requires a process of interpretations. So that's, that's a process of someone's knowing something. It doesn't matter. I say a word, I write a book, you, you, uh, you read something from Facebook, you uh, watch some uh, movies, some videos. Those are all interpretations. So the right interpretations means the knowledge being transferred. Uh, but if there's a wrong interpretation, that's why it, what happened was misunderstanding, misinterpretation. And the second one, the source of knowledge, uh, where do we get our knowledge from? Give me some example. Where do you learn from? Besides, of course, besides lectures in the class. Other than lectures in the class that you registered in UPM, where else do you, do you learn something? From the internet, okay. Internet news experiences. So we have different examples here. Experience, yes. Uh, there's, there's one specific topic that talks how we acquire knowledge from experience. News, internet, those are media. Yeah, Kashin is saying media. Internet is just a media. Internet is just a media. Who writes the article in the internet? Who writes the news? The author. Who is the author? So those are just a media. So we, we, technically, we don't say that we acquire knowledge from the internet. We acquire knowledge from the person who uh, put the whatever information they put on the internet. That's why we have to be careful with things that you receive on the internet. It deals with epistemological questions, whether that information, knowledge you receive from internet, is it valid or not? So who is the source? And has been saying from expert, yes. If it's from expert, we can consider it as a valid knowledge. If you, uh, if you listen to some, you know, Jack and Jill down the hill talking about vaccine, <laughs> making a lot of theory uh, and you know if, if you are anti-vaccine here I still respect you don't worry uh, but you just have to pick and choose from where you get the knowledge from yes I know there are some authorities doctors who are experts in medicine they disagree with vaccine for whatever reason if you are anti-vaccine listen from them uh, but if you are even even if you are pro vaccine, you support vaccine, but you just listen to someone who is who know nothing, just make a lot of assumptions, uh, then that's not right. That's not right. Uh, but I do. I personally believe that vaccination do it is a great effort, and it's it's from history. It's it's not just during our time. It happens in the past. So that's my personal opinion. So from experts, it's very important. Sometimes we receive some news and we are so excited. We did not check where is the source from. It turned out it comes from, you know, someone who has lost his mind. Uh, so uh, that's one question or one, one issue related with epistemology. Uh, the third one, the structure of knowledge. Does knowledge have hierarchy? Hierarchy means certain knowledge is at a higher level than other knowledge. What do you guys think? Does knowledge have hierarchy? Does some knowledge is considered as a higher level, more important than other knowledge? Or if you say no, it means all knowledge are at the same level. So does knowledge have hierarchy? What do you think? Uh, 
Okay, Regina say yes. I want to see how many say yes, how many say no. Maybe in terms of difficulty of understanding. Okay, in terms of difficulty of understanding, uh, in some, okay, it means that higher level knowledge is difficult to understand. Lower level knowledge is easier to understand. Is that what you mean? Yes, Doctor. Okay, that can be, that can be a, a possible a theory. That can be a theory. Um, but math, easy math, kindergarten level math uh, is a lower level. Additional mathematics, those in Malaysia, we have subject additional mathematics. Even if I take SPM again, I don't think I can answer additional mathematics. So it's going to be at a higher level. Okay, what about if I ask you, between, uh, between mathematics and physics, which one is higher? Or is it the same? Or is it still depends on difficulties? Between mathematics and physics? I think you need math to be able to do physics, right? I'm sorry, Lin Kianli, I barely, can barely hear you. I'm sorry, uh, Doctor, I meant like um, you would need at least some prerequisite knowledge from math to be able to do physics. Yes, definitely, exactly. Uh, that is why, excuse me, that is why some, some uh, scholars, when they are talking about hierarchy of knowledge, uh, some of them theorize that mathematics is a higher level knowledge compared to physics, chemistry, and biology, compared to science. Uh, yes, if you see it, both has higher and lower in terms of difficulty, it is. But uh, responding to Lim Kianli's answer, you need to know math first in order for you to know physics, because physics use mathematics. Chemistry use mathematics. You measure the uh, solution, there's a, there's a measurement of the solution. Kepekatan, uh, I'll say it in English. <laughs> The, 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 the solution, uh, what is the, I'm sorry, it's just stuck in my mind, the term, kepekatan, which is thick or thin. Concentration, yeah, thank you, Siti Arzira. Concentration, uh, liquid concentration, there are a lot of things that require uh, calculation in, in, in chemistry. The same thing as in biology, you measure the length of the plant to know uh, the growth rate of a plant. Uh, you measure the nutrients, uh, the, con the, the, the content of a certain plant, uh, the, the physiological, the, the amount of uh, blood uh, in, in animals, uh, what kind of, iron, what kind of uh, minerals have in blood. So those requires mathematics. So some scholars, for example, Ibn Sina, if you heard Ibn Sina, in English they call it Avicenna. Uh, his, his hierarchy of knowledge, his theory on hierarchy of knowledge, Mathematics is higher than physics, chemistry, biology. Physics, chemistry, biology, these are pure sciences. That's why if you look in our, our, our university, uh, Department of Physics, Department of, of uh, Mathematics, Department of Biology, uh, it's under the Faculty of Science. Uh, whereas, uh, fields of study or knowledge of a certain certain uh, field of study, for example, like engineering, medicine, these are actually a lower level of knowledge because they are actually applied sciences. You have to know pure science before you can learn applied sciences. That's why before you become a doctor or engineer, uh, they want to see uh, how you master physics. When you become a doctor, how you master biology in school. So, Technically, in terms of, I'm not talking in terms of which knowledge makes more money. Of course, you ask which knowledge makes more money. That's a different story. Of course, in engineering, they create a lot of products, a lot of technology. Uh, in medicine, they create vaccines and stuff. They make a lot of money. But in terms of hierarchy of knowledge, they are actually, applied sciences are actually the lowest level because they cannot exist without pure science. And pure science cannot exist without Mathematics. So is mathematics the highest form of knowledge? Oh, 
I salute those who learn mathematics. Is mathematics the highest, anything higher than mathematics? Can't think of anything. So those who have degree in mathematics is the most intelligent person. So according to Ibn Sina, what's higher than mathematics is called metaphysics. Metaphysics is higher than mathematics because math uh, mathematics requires metaphysics. What is metaphysics? Uh, it's, it's something that is beyond physics. That's why it's called metaphysics. Uh, if someone have their PhD in metaphysics, I don't know. I don't know what to say because there was one at one time someone claimed that he has a PhD in metaphysics. It turned out uh, it was actually a fake, a fake certificate. Uh, PhD, metaphysics is, is deals with something that beyond the physical world. When you are talking about consciousness, when you are talking about the mind, because when, we, when you do mathematics, the process actually happens a lot in your mind. Chonga, we say in, 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 in in our what uh, in Malay, we say chonga. And um, if you see that, uh, we have one person, Adiputra. Adiputra, you know, at one time he was very good. Uh, he can do mathematics, university level mathematics when he's still in the kindergarten. I, I think. Uh, so that happens a lot. A very complicated uh, process, uh, mathematical process in the mind. So the mind uh, is not something that's physical. You're thinking. Remember when I said you cannot know, transfer knowledge like you transfer objects or files in computer because it's not something physical, the mind. So that's metaphysics. There are a lot of other metaphysical topics. Uh, it's just that difficult for me to give examples, except when you are talking metaf about metaphysics uh, from a religious perspective. Uh, logic is another thing. Logic uh, is, is not something that Yes, you can write down logical uh, rules and logical reasoning, but the process actually happens in your mind. But when we talk about religion, it deals a lot with metaphysics, the concept of God, uh, the concept of here after what happens after you die, the concept of spirit. Uh, you know, uh, a lot of religious people believe that our body, our, our self is not only physical, but there's also a, a spiritual aspect of it. So that deals with metaphysical uh, question. So that's the structure of knowledge. And that's theory from Ibn Sina, and I think it's very reasonable. Uh, there's a lot of explanation on that. Now, the, th the fourth one, category of knowledge. There are different types of knowledge. Uh, I think we can, we can look at some examples of the categories of knowledge here. Tell me what's the, the difference between knowing and believing. We go with the, the first two, knowing versus believing. Someone knows something, but someone believes something. Is, it, is there any difference or is it the same? So Lim, Lim Kianli says this is different. Anyone else? Anyone wants to share you why you think it's, the, it's different? Okay, Arjira said knowing, not necessarily believing. Someone knows something, but it does not mean that that person believes in it. Okay, take a few seconds, think about it, whether you agree with Siti Arzira or not. If someone knows something, it doesn't mean that he believes in it. Is it true? Okay, uh, you give a good example, Lozen, like ghost. For example, uh, ghost. Uh, if you know ghost, if you know ghost, if you know about ghost, it doesn't mean you believe in it. If someone know about ghost, 
Okay, I think that makes sense. You can know it, but you don't believe in it. Uh, does that consider as knowledge to you? Is ghost a knowledge? You really know ghost? I mean, if you say you don't believe in it? Am I? Okay, you look at it from a cultural perspective. I have a professor, uh, when, when I was in the US, I have a professor, John Walbridge. He's a Jew, a Yahudi Jew. Uh, he teach Islamic philosophy, he teach Quranic studies. But from his teaching, I don't think he believes in, in, in Islamic teaching. But he learns it because uh, for the purpose of academic. Uh, learn it. Uh, for him, it's just some, some people's culture, some people's religion. Uh, it doesn't mean that he believes in it. So I say he has a lot of knowledge about Islamic teachings more than me. Here is uh, Tafsir interpretations of the Quran, different books. Uh, but he's, he's not a Muslim. I think that can happen. Uh, Kashini said, yes, because you know many things, but not believe on everything you know. I, I don't know. If it makes sense. I think it makes sense. Uh, you know Christmas, but you don't believe in Christ, okay? Knowing is knowledge about something. Believing is a firm conviction or trust on something. So it's, if someone believes in something, I say it's much more deeper, right? I'm, I'm responding to Suvarna, Suvarna Susay. If someone knows something versus someone believes in something, I think belief is something that's more deeper. If you believe in something, of course, you definitely know it, right? If you believe in something that you don't know, then it's impossible. How can you believe it uh, if you don't know it in the first place? So these words we use every day, sometimes but when we, we discuss about it, I think uh, uh, the more we talk about it, we discuss like this, it makes, uh, creates more understanding. Uh, except that I want to bring you, or I want to bring this discussion to what Socrates uh, say about knowing and believing. He relates that with the concept of truth. And I'm going to begin this discussion with this question. Can you know something that is false? Can you say you know something that is false? Now, don't get me wrong. Um, I'm not talking about, you know, I'm not talking about knowing that uh, a news is false. No, that's... That, that, that's different. No, no certain news is false, that's different. Uh, I'm, I'm talking about if you know A, but A is false, will you consider that as knowledge? Can knowledge be something that is false? Let's say if you heard the news, someone say, you know, on 1st April, uh, they're going to be locked down. There's a the news. Uh, that news that itself, you know, it's false. You know that the news is false. Does knowing the news means you... Does knowing the news means you know a certain knowledge? Yeah, I think that makes sense when Loza said, no, I also believe so. Uh, knowing a certain news, that knowledge is not. Uh, knowing a certain false news, that knowledge is not knowledge. It, 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 it's not knowledge. Knowing that news is not knowledge. So that's why it's necessary when you know something, that thing has to be something that's true. If false, it means you don't have that kind of knowledge. Uh, if it's true, then you have to believe it. So that's how Socrates relates between knowing and believing. Knowing and believing has to be uh, connected. 
and what connects it is if something is true or not. Well, that's Socrates, but uh, I leave everything to, to you guys. Uh, I think knowledge can be false until. Yeah, that's why there's a method of falsification in, in, in uh, knowledge tradition. There is a method called a falsification. When you are doing some kind of research, what you are doing, if you're doing experiment, what you're doing is actually not to, pre, not to prove something is true. Your hypothesis is actually to prove something is false. If you fail to prove that it's false, then you have to accept it's true. For now, it's true. The result is still the same, but the way you approach knowledge is different when we talk about the method of falsification. Uh, I don't know if we're going to cover that or not, but if we're going to cover that, we're going to talk about that in detail. Now, let's talk about recognizing versus perceiving. Recognize versus perceive. When you recognize something, I'm sorry, my, my headphone, headphone here is in low battery. Uh, Think about it. Recognizing versus perceiving. I'm gonna find a charger real quick. Uh, you guys uh, uh, talk about it in the in the chat box. Uh, the difference between recognizing and perceiving, and as well as the the last question there. Uh, give me a few seconds. I need to find a charger for my my earphone. 